what's up guys go ahead and grab your swim trunks and the suntan lotion because we're going for a ride on a 276 rinker captiva bow rider let's go <laughs> Watch this video on my YouTube channel, which is East Boats TV. The purpose of this channel is to make a lot of training, how to, and review videos, pretty much anything to do with boats, boating on the water, above the water, or underneath it, including fishing. We make videos for it. So if I provide you any value at all, please consider subscribing by clicking down below, hitting that subscribe button, following it up with a smash on that bell icon to be notified via email anytime we upload something new. So what we're about to do is go ahead and take this beautiful black 276 Raker out on the water and show you how to operate it and show you how she runs we're going to go through the systems first buttons and switches gauges then we're going to drive it then we're going to take a look at the condition and follow it up at the end for, with some awesome drone footage so be sure to hang around and check that out let's go ahead and get started what it really means to live life golden once you get your ranker 276 in the water because it's got to be in the water to run and you got your plug in the third thing you're going to want to do is come back here underneath the starboard side aft rear facing seat and turn your battery switch to combine both batteries. The alternator is going to charge both the batteries when it's on that switch. Now if you're going to stop and cove out listen to the radio, just flip it over to on. That way you've isolated your systems to a single standalone battery. Speaking of which, when you're going to stop and cove out, go ahead and switch that key to the accessory. Okay, Off is the only way it will come out. On, start. Make sense? If you go to start and you get the old click, 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 switch back to combined batteries, it'll fire right up, charge them back up. From there, you just come up to the helm. And remember, this is a multi-port, direct injected, fuel injected, awesome motor. To save some time in the video, I'm gonna include some links in the description down below. If you just click down below the video description, it'll pop up. I'm gonna do the, a link to a video, the three things to do when your belt won't start. How to tie up some back lines how to operate tilt and trim, how to back a boat in, just stuff that will help you guys while you're out there on the water. But for now, we're in neutral, kill switch is up, we know we got battery power, turn the key on, the button sounds, which means, hey, I'm getting ready to start the boat, get away from the propeller, just like that, fires right up. Now, shifting, there's a release underneath the handle, a definitive stop for forward, the Bravo 3X, shifts extremely smooth. The definitive catch is nice for docking so you don't juice it and go wrong. You don't want to do that. Neutral's in the middle. Again, you only lift up on the right handle to engage it into gear. Reverse is right here. Definitive catch. Throttle range beyond that. So, let's go. You can set this wheel however you want it. Thanks to tilt steering. The button below the helm right here. Let's go ahead and run through our buttons and switches before we get it out there and open it up. We got a blower right here that ventilates the engine compartment. Our navigation lights, that's when we're driving at nighttime. That's the red and green built in and the white light built in up top. Anchor light plugs in up on top of the arch and plug Let's it in. Get up. When you're done, forward, forward. that's navigating. In the middle's off and it lights up light when it's on. Anchor light stopped at night, just the white light. Cockpit lights are inside, and we'll yeah. come back to show you those working later. Docking lights are up front. Uh, cabin lights. If this boat were a closed bow, it had the exact same helm, so it doesn't have those. Uh, accessory, God knows, sometimes at night it'll turn something on. Spreader lights are your arch lights here. Okay, you got more accessories, you got a horn. Build foam is automatic, but the National Marine Manufacturer Association that governs how boats are built says all boats have to have that switch. So engine hatch is power. We'll take a look at that once we get back and put it on the trailer because it's kind of rough out here. We got some more accessory switches and the galley pump for the water system, which is on. Hey, it works good. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, tilt and trim. I've had a lot of people, <coughs> excuse me, excited to drive and as they accelerate, they have the finger on the trim up button. 
when you start off, you always want it down. When it's down, it's pushing water this way, giving the rear end of the boat lift, and driving the nose forward. Let's look at our gauges. We got a quarter tank of gas, we got great volts, oil pressure, engine temp, we've got our GPS here, trim gauge, depth finder, tachometer. Right here, we have indicators for our trim tabs. So now that we know what the buttons and switches do, we know that the gauges all work good. We're actually, I'm gonna take the camera from Billy and I'm gonna accelerate the boat, full speed trim down. Why do I do that? Because whenever you test drive a boat, you wanna make sure that how the boat sounds and feels with a load put on it. A load put on it, meaning trim down, drive the nose down, nose down full speed, that's when it's gonna hit, miss, pit, pop, sputter, fall on its face. Once I know that it feels good with a load on it, we're gonna go ahead and trim up to reach our top speed. Be sure to refer to that trim video with any questions. Uh, I know how accurate our depth finder is, by the way, because it's roughly 50 feet at these no-weight buoys, and we're hit at 52 right now. Our GPS, GPS may uh, beep on occasion because it's trying to locate us, so don't let that annoy you. Uh, let's go ahead and drive this bad boy. Okay, another unique feature, or good feature about the GPS, it is accurate. So it's 3.9 miles an hour, and it, the time is 2.33 p.m. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this bolster down. So you can see it's a little rough here at the Lake of the Ozarks, but this big old boat's going to handle it just fine. So this is the driving portion of our video. Let's get started here. During the driving portion also, I'm going to play with the trim tabs after I've driven it and put a load to it. So how I'm going to show you that those work is I'm going to drop one side, raise it back up, drop the other side, and you'll see that the boat turns. So once they kind of quit crowd me here, there's a whole lake over there, kids. Little lake over there, kids. You can turn a little wider. Hi. Right. Being friendly. It's good to be friendly. I'm a salesman. Gotta be friendly. All right. Let's go. So this boat's got a lot of punch with the 8.2 and the Bravo 3X drive. Man, it turns smooth too. Woo! It sets it right on the plane. I mean, this boat runs nice and flat, and we're at only here. Let's even slow down. We can plane this bad boy out at 3,000 RPM, which is pretty impressive. So we're cruising right here with the speed of 27.5 miles an hour. We're gonna go ahead and accelerate, if I can get it straight. Just gonna push it. So again, trimmed all the way down. Reaching speeds of 43. 44 miles an hour. God darn, it's rough out here. 45, 46 roughly. this to Billy and he's gonna record me talking about the trim tabs and show you that. Okay so we know that the boat runs great. It's a little rough out here it's still a Monday and a lot of people will stay down on Mondays but we hit 50 miles an hour no problem at all about a quarter to an eighth of trim up on our outdrive. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the boat on plane again. Billy's gonna record and I'm gonna talk about how these tabs operate. So operating trim tabs is very easy if you don't overthink them. Don't even mess with them until you get used to operating tilt and trim on the outdrive. Uh, otherwise, you won't know how the boat feels when it's trimmed down and you're docking functionally correctly. If that makes sense. When you learn how the boat feels and you're not, it's not doing what you want it to do, then you'll know that maybe you forgot to put your tabs up or something. So, always pick str something straight in front of you before you touch them. It's pointless to turn the boat and adjust the trim tabs. They're made for lateral stability to correct out correct the load if you got too many people on one side or another. So we're just gonna get the boat on plane here, nice and smooth. 3,000 RPM, 20 miles an hour. Real comfortable at cruise speed. Not touching the steering wheel at all. I'm gonna pick something straight ahead of me and I'm gonna go ahead and push one down. Whoa! <laughs> 
they were, this one works really good. So that's very responsive to the trim tab. Kind of straighten her back out. Now on a day when the leg is rough like this, and we'll show you in just a minute, we get the boat going on cruise and put them both down, it'll keep that nose flat. So now let's do the other side once we're around these boats. Other side, see how significant that turning is? Gonna bring that back up. Now this boat does have indicators, which is great when you're learning, but you really don't need them after about three or four times. Like put the seatbelt on your car. Don't think about it. Now let's put them both down. my assessment of this model is it's in very nice condition it's a great big bow rider for friends and family take a lot of people in I sell a lot of these with 350s 5.7 GXI Volvos 5.7 GI Volvos uh, 6.2 Mercs but with the Ford 8.2 496 is great too but with the new 8.2 man this boat doesn't have to work to do anything it's just very smooth and easy to operate I mean you hardly have to give it any throttle which is great so doesn't hit miss fit sputter, runs very smooth. Everything that we've touched or turned on works so far. So now we're gonna pull it out on trailer one more time and we'll check it all out. We'll see you in just a minute. Never forget when you get your boat on the trailer and you get it secured and shut off, trim it up. Now when you do shut it off, your gauges quit working. So remember that. So we're gonna go ahead and trim this up. And get it all up there. Right. So I'm already recording. Yep. So once you have, so once you have, we're gonna go ahead and take this boat out for a ride and show you how it works and how everything operates. Oh, shit. Okay. Your 276 ranker out on the water, you first start by turning your battery switch on. When your batteries are on, your alternator is gonna charge all the batteries. start all over. Okay. So if I provide you any value at all, please consider subscribing by clicking down below, hitting that subscribe button, following it up with a smash on that bell icon to be notified. Let's go ahead and take a look at the gel coat condition as we get her pulled out of the water. So the rub rail, pull sides is beautiful and stunning and stunningly beautiful. We have a little nick right here in the pinstriping, not the gel coat. So that's just like white tape, essentially, so to speak. So the rub rail is nice, drop down whole sides. So we got our neoprene bow roller. Now this boat is gonna leave here with a trailer. So we're gonna check out the trailer also. Gel coat below the rub rail is awesome. Got another little nick in the sticker. Now again, these all come off. You can always replace them or just take them off and leave them off. Just pull off the sunglasses so I don't miss anything. Got a good wax, has a nice shine to it. Trailer's in great shape, no rust or crust, anything crazy. It's got the vault oil sealed axles. Maintenance free. It's got a six inch steel tube channel. Custom made for it by Phoenix Trailers. Don't know a lot about them, but it sure looks expensive. Two and five sixteenths inch ball. Sure, docking light housings. Dropping down to the hull. So the reverse chine looks great. Lifting strikes look great. And the keel's beautiful along with the stem. So that's port side. We're going to hop over to starboard. Let's go ahead and drop down, do this in reverse. So our reverse chine looks great. Lifting strikes, keel and stem look beautiful. Above the rub rail now. Starboard side, nice shine. If you can see that it's shiny. Blower vent covers, that's a nice new design. A few little nicks back here just on the pinstripe. And then there's a little rub, dock rub kind of on the stainless part. 
you can always try to rub that out with stainless steel. It makes more sense to do that than to try to replace it. So dropping down whole sides is beautiful. Very, very minor nick here. Right through here, that's about the only spot I've seen. The only thing I hate about these humid days is sometimes it messes with my camera exposure. But there she is. Let's go back and look at that outdrive. Should have planned that out a little better, shouldn't I? So you got the big extended swim platform that covers up the outdrive. But platform is beautiful. Now we can drop down and take a look at the Bravo 3X drive. Props are in beautiful shape. Those are 24 pitch. Bravo 3X with a 8.2, 380 horsepower Mercury. Take a look at the drive. Now this has the newer bellow system. So what Mercury has done to eliminate the boot here. So you still have like your shift cable boots, throttle cable boots here, but instead of making this um, pickup longer from the inside, they put a flap in here, put taken this from the out drive, built it in to the actual lower unit, and then brought a boot out. So you don't have to fight uh, exhaust bellows like you used to. So that's a great, great idea. Trim tabs are integrated up underneath the hole. They both work as you know. Time for the interior, Take a look baby. at the interior condition. Starting with the vinyl, aft in good shape. Got storage right there's your transom shower that pulls out from the cap there. It's not missing any carpet. Now for skiing, kneeboarding, wakeboarding, etc., use a tow point there. For tubing, use the little one back here. It puts thousands of pounds of pressure on that. So more storage. So walk through. Great big old storage tub. If your batteries were ever to go dead, you could actually take this access point or circle. It's an access point with a circle to pull the pin for the hatch so you can raise it up manually. Just lift it. So here's your filler cushion. It's in great shape. Okay. So let's do one side so we don't get dizzy. We're gonna go port side with the vinyl. So you got filler cushions, original manuals, table posts. The light that plugs in the top, which is the anchor light. Captain's seat looks good. Bolster flips down. Looks like maybe a little bitty nick right there. Cup holders. Now you got a grab handle and a subwoofer down there. Right here. While we're down here, let's talk about these seats. So this here is how you make it slide. I think you get no, you gotta do both of them. So one makes it swivel. So this one makes it swivel. This one makes it slide. This one tightens it up so you can't swivel so freely, as well as uh, makes it to where you can get the seat off. Heaven forbid you wanted to do that. Yeah, look how great the carpeting is since we got a close up. So your table goes, those are drains. Great big ski storage here. Struts holding it up on its own, as you can see. Oops, I'm sure that was loud. Got a little glove box with a lock. Here, that's the cover for the GPS. Is about had it. Another ignition key. I never opened this up, so hopefully, I'm gonna get myself into a pickle. There's our table, our snap covers, what's left of the whole enclosure that's pretty dirty. Storage here, there's light in there. I don't think I turn, I turn the battery on. Inside here is a head. There's a pump out. Right there. There's a place for a pump out porta potty. But they disconnected or took it out and took the hose off. They're about 60 bucks online. The canvas is in great shape, by the way. I've covered it up myself. So you got cup holders. All right, down. You got more storage here, which goes all the way back. It's a pull for the cover. Wind block door to shut the wind when it's cool, cold, windy. Okay, there we had to put a brand new CD player in. 
and replace a couple speakers. So this CD player is Bluetooth, but when you do that, the remotes don't work anymore because that's Kenwood, that's Sony. But you do have Bluetooth now. Taking a look at the bow. You always want to look at the backrest, top of the vinyl. It's in great shape all the way around. Okay. You got an anchor locker with a bow boarding ladder. Pop out cleats. More storage. These look all the way out. Ranker does a good job of making the undersides of these seats uh, plastic tubs, like ready cast tubs. So it's easier to keep clean. Sorry. All right, coming back. We spent a long time looking at the helm. There it is again. Uh, cup holders. You got indirect LED lights down here. Captain's seat. Same thing again with the adjustments underneath it. Got the flip up or down bolster right there. This is the butt seat that fills in the back. Most people never use it. It just goes right there. All right. So during our test drive, that's a dry storage box. But during our test drive, I hit the water system button and it works. But the problem is I had the lid shut. So I made a little mess. I had to wipe down. Need to do a better job. Trash can and then this pulls out of here. So you can kind of tuck your bag through the hole. You also plug in like a phone charger blender etc there's another led light great big nice storage compartment there let's see what storage we've got underneath this seat more tub storage okay looking at the arch it's got speakers up here and now we turn the radio on so i better do that and a rack so i'm gonna turn those batteries on we're gonna check out the stereo and stuff. the accessory position Find, find a song or radio. Radio. If you wanna know the truth, how I feel about you tonight. If you wanna speakers, I can hear these. If you want the last night, yeah, we are yeah. that one. The sun, so I'll come back to it. Oh, they sound great. And the JL is just the sound difference. The sound quality of the JL compared to everything else is crazy. Just a great marine speaker. For sure, on the video, you can't tell the difference, but I can. Standing here. Okay, now I'm gonna mess with the bass. See if we can get anything different. Alright, so we do have a power engine hatch. So it's got the 8.2 mag, engine compartment's nice and clean. There's our water tank with the antifreeze in it. Always keep a quart of gear lube with you in your storage container there. 380 horsepower, runs amazing. It's damn clean in here. Well, there she is.
So that's her. My buddy Juan over here, Juanito. Say hola, Juanito. Hola. He's getting ready to cover it back up. So I'm gonna figure out why the sub's not working. Other than that, can't think of anything bad to tell you. She looks great, runs great, it's in great condition. I'm sure you'll be happy with her when you receive her. We'll see you on the water. Models popping bottles.